What's going on here, guys? Paul from Hashtag Sports. So uh, coming to you from uh, the basement studios here in Lockport, New York, uh, Mario's got the week off. So uh, I wanted to touch base, and, and we had done a live stream talking about the outlook of the 2020 Bills, but something had come up that uh, I didn't get a chance to talk about on the live stream. I didn't get a chance to talk about it with the Hall of Fame uh, members. By the way, if you want to become a Hall of Fame member or another level membership with Hashtag, go ahead and hit that join button uh, next to our name and 50% uh, of the proceeds go to benefit the pun foundation um, there was something that I wanted to talk about and it has to do with the future of the bills and it's something some of you might not really want to talk about Social media is a marvelous place, right? It, not only is it a breeding ground for uh, everything that's great in the world, it's also got some pretty tragic stuff too. Um, and one of the major components of trying to cover the bills is trying to pay attention to all their social media, which is something I will admit, uh, I've Mario and I have six kids between the two of us. We don't have time to be on Reddit and Twitter and all that stuff following, but when we do hear snippets of things that have come out to be important, um, we want to come back and kind of talk about that because the social media piece is one thing that we always kind of remain a little bit outside of um, because it's volatile um, and you don't always get the best context. So it, it, it could be, you could jump to conclusions pretty easily if you're going only by what you see on social media. So one of the topics that had come up was, okay, let's, in a bubble, just assume the Bills are going to play a 2020 football season, which again, totally up in the air um, as to whether a season is, is even going to happen. The NFL is trying to push forward, getting it done. But, I mean, you're looking at massive losses of revenue, um, you know, the way that the, the future impact that a drop in revenue like that could have on the NFL could send ripples for a long time. Uh, the Players Association and the owners themselves are going to be losing money this season. Really, it doesn't matter how you cut it. A drop in revenue is a drop in revenue for the players because they actually make more money than just their salary. They get parts of revenue sharing as well. So in any case, um, there was something that had come up um, that I thought was a really cool conversation. And Micah Hyde had mentioned, listen, if I have to go into quarantine, and I'm, I'm kind of paraphrasing, but from from what I had picked up, and and I, again, I'll, I'll try to make sure if I'm off base here that I go and correct it in post-production, but um, what, he had, what he basically said was, if I feel like um, the only way to play a football season is to go into quarantine and not see my family, then that's not something I'm really comfortable doing. Uh, even Stefan Diggs on social media had said something, I'm not going to say similar, but something sort of akin to that. Um, and it begs an interesting question. How different are the Bills if you remove Stefan Diggs from the offense and Micah Hyde from the defense? And let's just assume that those are the only two starters on uh, both sides of the football. How does that really change the complexion of this team? Uh, not only that, but what about the other teams inside the division, right? If these players are willing to step back because they're not willing to play a season while being secluded, because realistically, that's almost what they're going to have to be, right? Uh, football is a, a very violent game. It's a, a game where you literally are touching somebody every single play. Um, it, so the only way to try and keep the game safe is to try and quarantine the players. And I know a lot of people are going to say, Paul, these guys are millionaires. Yes, they are millionaires, but they're millionaires who their day with their kids is just as valuable as ours. So regardless of the income that they make, you have to quantify the value of family time. And if they're going to get family time, uh, how is that going to work? And it's not going to be them living at their house, right? Or the typical football season. Uh, we're probably looking at something a, a little bit more strict. So with that being said, how different is this team without Stefan Diggs on offense and without Micah Hyde on defense? Well, first off, I think it's easier to talk about Stefan Diggs, so let's start there. So if Stefan Diggs does decide to sit out the season, uh, I don't think the Players Association uh, would be the Players Association unless they had his back for that, right? So if a player is going to step back because of quarantine, they should not be fined or punished for that. If they're making a decision, they should be able to sit out the season. Now, a year doesn't expire on the contract, so Diggs' contract would still you know, be you still have the same number of years when he comes back um, as he would if he just kept playing. So I want to make sure that 
you know, it's clear that if a player sits out a season, they don't accrue a season. Their their contract stays. It goes in. It's a it's in a freeze, right? So no time is being ticked off that contract. Um, so if Diggs does decide not to play in 2020, um, his contract will remain the same in 2021, possibly when a safer football season could exist. So how does that change the complexion of the offense? Well, I think we're all really excited about St- Stephon Diggs. Uh, you have a viable deep threat on every single play. Stephon Diggs was one of the leaders in the NFL in deep uh, in deep passes. We talked about that a little bit uh, on the Hall of Fame call, I believe. Or oh no no no, um, did we talk about that? Oh, we talked about I talked about that on the Rock Pile Report podcast, which you guys can go and download now on Podbean. So um, and Stephon Diggs was one of the leaders in the league in in targets. Uh, downfield, right? Uh, he averaged like an absurd 17.8 yards per reception. It was some absurd number, right? He is a very viable deep throw, though it doesn't always fit the mold of what you consider a deep threat. And kind of last year was an aberration if you look at the rest of his stats uh, as far as being a consistent deep threat. Um, but with that being said, how much does that change the offense? Well, it's a nearly incumbent offense. I'm actually more excited about Zach Moss than I am about Stephon Diggs, although I think Diggs gives you additional targets that make it harder to... um, Having Diggs on the field makes your other weapons that much more dangerous, right? So that I'm really excited about. But if he decides to sit out the 2020 season, then I understand that decision, and I don't think it really ultimately makes me revisit where I think this offense is, although he's an incredibly explosive weapon. It's big changes if Micah Hyde decides to sit out this season on the defensive side of the football. Now, mind you, they've been drafting and signing safeties for as long as McDermott's been around. It's not like they haven't often tried to build depth in that position. They have. Um, so, like, the drafting of Jaquan Johnson, uh, just as an example, right, being the most recent example. Um, and then you know, the various signings, uh, they've always seemed to have a veteran um, that's kind of there to back up that position. But if Micah Hyde decides to sit out, that completely changes the defense for me, right? So I, I kind of look at the defense as you go right down the middle. So between uh, your defensive between your defensive tackles, uh, Star Latule, Ed Oliver, and Harrison Phillips, I'm very comfortable with those three within rotation. After that, I have Edmonds in the middle, and that's really hard to argue against the athletic freak that Edmonds is. And then after that, you got Poyer and Hyde. Now, I like Poirier an awful lot, but I don't think he's the field general that Micah Hyde is. And actually, teams are really careful about throwing the ball downfield against Micah Hyde. Um, He's a very, very, very dangerous weapon when defending the deep ball. He reads coverage great as a play breaks down. He reads a quarterback great. Um, So he always seems to be in the right spot. So losing a player like Micah Hyde completely changes the way coverages are called on the back end of the defense. So to me, a season without Micah Hyde is much more damning than a season without Stephon Diggs. Um, and again, same circumstances. If he does decide to sit out, then, you know, in 2021, his contract will be exactly where it was last, last season. So where does it leave the bills if Micah Hyde does sit out? Well, I think, you know, obviously... You're pretty comfortable with Poyer, right? But Poyer's kind of been more of an aggressive down in the box player the last couple seasons. You're going to ask him to step back into coverage, um, which s- some people may be okay with, right? Um, I'm okay with Poyer in coverage, but what I lose, what I lose with Hyde, no longer being kind of that field general on the back end of the de- on the and back end of the defense. Um, yeah, I'm not replacing that. Right? I don't think there's anybody that understands this defense better than Micah Hyde from a coverage standpoint. So anybody that you bring in, they're not going to be able to replace that level of experience within this defense. Plus, it's been a, a very incumbent defense, right? So it's been the same players on defense for the last few seasons, minus your rotation across the defensive line front. Um, so what does that mean? Well, that means Tremaine Edmonds needs to step up uh, if Micah Hyde is not going to play. And not to say that Hyde will be the only defensive player that decides to sell the 2020 season if it does come to that. Uh, there may be there may be a rash of this across the NFL where players just go, this is not worth it to me. Um, and I would imagine that to be across a lot of veteran players who've put in their time and are looking at it saying, listen, if I get sick, my career may be over. Um, whereas a young player on a rookie deal or you know, in the, entering their second, third year in the league may say, listen, I can't afford not to play. You know, my contract's coming up. I've got to make my mark in the league. And it's a great opportunity for younger players because as the veteran participation goes down, rookie participation or, you know, 
rookie controlled uh, contracts, those four year contracts. Though that's going to be on the incline, right? And the competition level is going to go down. So uh, rookies will really have the opportunity to kind of put their stamp on their position uh, and say, listen, I'm here. Uh, and I'm here to stay. So even when the veterans come back, you're going to have to take this job from me. So it's a very fascinating paradox that's happening within the NFL. So do veteran players even want to play? A player like Micah Hyde, again, you kind of look at it and say, listen, he's on a reasonable contract right now. I don't think he's going to get a big contract after this. Um, so can he afford to play a season where he could get sick? And in getting sick, is that going to be, you know, is that is that going to be the near end of his career? Um, the veteran players, when they stop playing, there's a big problem there, right? So when a veteran player stops playing in the NFL, they really do get forgotten about. If they end up on a team where they're a little bit buried on the depth chart, um, if they end up in a situation where, uh, you know, they're getting left out in the cold by the by, you know, a lack of of talent on that side of the football. Their career ends rather relative, relatively quickly. So a player like Micah Hyde, you do have to really weigh the variables of can he afford to play or can he afford not to play? And I, I'm kind of with Micah Hyde here. If he decides that this season is simply too dangerous for him to play, I completely understand him not playing. And I, I know that, you know, as fans, we're going to say, listen, you know, you're getting paid millions of dollars. The, the, you know, you need to be there for your team. You're a leader on that team. All those, all the, the case in point, absolutely. But his career could be in jeopardy if he sits out because, again, you get forgotten about in the NFL. So if Hyde sits out, that's dangerous. But is it more dangerous than playing and getting sick and being ineffective uh, if he is able to return? I don't know. That's a tough question to answer. So, Kind of to summarize, Stefan Diggs, just as an example, if he says that, you know, the season isn't really for him, I'm not really freaking out about that. Although he's a, a very dynamic weapon, I'm not super concerned. Um, I'll be disappointed, clearly, because I'm really excited to see what this offense looks like with him. But if we're going to compare apples to apples, there's no comparison here to me. If Micah Hyde decides to sit out 2020, there's a major gap in the back end of that secondary, and it cannot be filled by just anybody. So if there's a player that you feel, if they sat out the 2020 season, would be completely detrimental to their side of the football for the Buffalo Bills, leave it in the comments section. Let me know. Uh, also, we made face masks and decals. If you guys want to get at those, we're going to do a package deal. Ten bucks gets you a, fa a hashtag face mask and a hashtag decal. Uh, you can email us at htag sports. Hit us up on Twitter at htag sports. The email is htag sports at gmail.com. Of course, you can hit us up here. I've got PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, all that stuff. Um, so, uh, yeah, the face mask is a hashtag face mask, and it says, um, I'm wearing this face mask to remind me not to talk to New England Patriot fans. So, kind of a fun little, this will, in New York State, we all got to wear them, so might as well have a little fun while we're there. Uh, and again, if you want to become a member of Hashtag, don't forget to hit that join button. 50% of the proceeds go to the Punt Foundation. This is Paul from the basement studios of hashtag sports in Lockport, New York. And again, if there's a player that you think is going to be detrimental to missing the season uh, for the Buffalo Bills, drop it in the comment section. Let's talk about it. Have a good one, everybody.